women denounce poor political representation and tonight we spotlight the level of political participation of women in the incoming administration come May 29. And the People's Democratic Party Governors Forum are to honor Governor Wike, Governor Mackinde, Autumn and others. This is Plus Politics and I am Mary Anakul. Leaders and other experts have said that women's political participation in Nigeria is below global standards. Almost half of Nigeria's estimated 200 million people are women. But gender balance is far from a reality in Nigeria's political landscape. 47% of Nigeria's 84 million voters are women. Now, with May 29 drawing close and all the eyes on the president-elect, will women be prioritized in the next administration? Well, joining us to discuss this is APC's national women leader, Dr. Beta Edu. It's good to have you join us. Good evening, Doctor. Thank you for having me. Great. Um, it's very important that we have these statistics because um, normally uh, we talk about the fact that women are supposed to lead, women are supposed to be the organizers, the ones who galvanize, support. But when it comes to the, the proper representation and giving them some sort of equity, we hardly see that. But is this something that we can say the APC has done, especially for you? I mean, I know you. Um, you've been in the forefront of all of the campaigning. It was surprising um, how much, you know, uh, how young, you know, uh, the first time, for the first time, an APC is having such a young women, woman leader. And I, think um, it's, and I think it's generally across the board because I do not know um, if any big political party in this country has had a young um, you know, a woman leader before you is a pace setting, you know, standard. How well will we see the APC use this pace that they've set um, come May 29? Well, first, thank you for having me on this evening. Um, basically, like you stated clearly in your introduction, that women have very, very ridiculously low representation in politics today across board, whether it's at the state level or at the National Assembly um, level, where we have under under 20 um, women presently in the National Assembly. And no matter how much more we push, we might not be able to get up to 20 um, for this present Assembly, which is very, very um, sad in spite of all the work that was done. Going into May 29th, we are very, very confident that the incoming president, Asiwa Jubola Ahmed Tinibu, who has been a promoter of women in politics, is going to give women over 35%. I've had several discussions with him on women inclusion in governance, politics, and leadership. And he's been very clear to say, even a 20, 35 percent is an understatement for the amount of work women do, for the value they bring to the table. And so we are praying and hoping very strongly to see a different picture where we'll have over 35 percent of his administration, both at the Federal Executive Council, to the boards for status, MDAs, and indeed even the very, very little things like um, uh, employment and civil service will have at least 35 percent of it going to the women's folk. Remember, Swajibola Metinibu has a very, very strong track record as it concerns empowering women. He started the twinning of a governor running with a woman as a deputy in this democratic um, uh, time. And of course, he has it has become a norm in Nigeria that today our party has at least three women as deputy governors on the ticket. So these are all things that you can point at and say, yes, Aswajibola Metinibu would indeed give women that parity and put us at the front burner. Um, talking about, you know, prioritizing women, just like I said in the opening, it's the first time having a young person like you hold this position. But the APC has over time been, you know, criticized for low representation when it comes to women uh, in past administrations. Now, let's talk about measures 
that will be put in place to ensure this because also their interests, whether we like it or not. Uh, yes, the president is one man, but then, of course, he represents the party. The party, obviously, had given him the platform to run for this position. Um, how do you make sure that you put measures in place to prioritize women's position and not just any kind of position, just for the case of giving women a position, but prominent positions? So first, to um, the glory of God, APC was able to take a very bold step to um, give their national woman leader to vote the national woman leader as a young person um, in her mid thirties. Uh, basically, um, from history and from the records, um, obviously the youngest in the history of any political party in Africa, and which for us was very significant in APC. But moving away from that, a lot was done by the party to be able to really, really, really put women at the front burner. Unfortunately, the dynamics that played out during the elections uh, threw a lot of women off guard because they, I, I want to say in my own, um, uh, uh, from my own point of view that they were not um, expecting what they saw in the last elections. Of course, we had uh, a situation um, where the APC uh, did a constitutional review to say women must be involved as delegates. So out of every five delegates, two must be women. Out of every three at the national level, one must be a woman. That way women can have more numbers to vote for other women and get proper women representation. We went ahead to provide free forms for women in the last election and we had over almost 500 women uh, pick up our forms at different levels, both at the House of Assembly and at at the level of the Senate and reps to run for the last election, um, we were able to still get at least 95 women on the ballot as candidates for that election. This is a far cry from what has always been when we used to have 20, 30 at most women running on the platform of APC. But with all of this that went on the ground to see that we have better, more women representation, um, uh, the dynamics of the entire elections changed. And you saw how keenly contested it was. And you saw new parties emerge in the whole scene. And um, at the end of the day, we could not produce as many as 95 um, women that we gave our tickets as candidates on our party um, platform, which was really very sad. At the National Assembly, we've basically been able to do about 10. And then, of course, at the State House of Assembly, we have a little more than that. So these, for us, are very disturbing um, figures. But going forward, we want to ensure as a party that we can um, uh, get all our stakeholders to come to the board of the 35% affirmative action for women, where we can have more women as councillors, more women as chairman of councils, more women as vice chairman of councils. That's the grassroots point where politics truly begin. And then they can build up from there to get into the State House of Assemblies and the National Assembly in the next four years. Also, we hope to financially empower more women through different programs and mediums, giving them appointments um, across board so that they are exposed to leadership, they are exposed to policies, they are exposed to governance. And when they come to run for election, they have a true feel of what it takes to lead. So we're counting on Atsuwaju Bola Ahmed Tinibu, the president-elect, to be able to do this. We're also counting on the 10th Assembly. And that's why we are very passionate about who takes the leadership of the 10th Assembly. We're counting on the 10th Assembly to be able to pass the gender bills that will really empower women to go out and run and take those political uh, positions. And finally, we hope that more women will be financially empowered and properly prepared for the next election so that no matter what the dynamics is, you still emerge as a winner after being given the ticket as a candidate of our party. I hear you say that you were sad at the number of women uh, who held positions or got tickets at the end of the day, that it was abysmally low. And then you're saying that you also um, ho are hoping that going forward things would change. And I'm curious, um, if at the party level this was trumped, um, why are we supposed to hold out hope that some magic will happen and that the boys club is going to let up, uh, especially when it comes to the juicy positions? Why should we be holding our hope so, if within so, the party there was no democracy for the woman? 
No, there was. Like I said, there was a constitutional review within the party that gave women more representation. Before now, we didn't have women as delegates. It was basically almost all a men affair. But compulsorily, really, the party has said two out of five, one out of three must be a woman. Beyond this, of course, like I told you, the party for the first time was able to give about 95 women uh, a, a platform to run the elections. Before now, it used to be about 10, in some cases 15. At best, our best shot has been about 31 so far. Now we went 200% above that and even more to give 95 women a ticket to run on the platform of our party. But like I said, a lot of dynamics played out during this particular um, season. We had new actors coming into the scene that completely put the women who we had given our tickets off their uh, um, the guard and at the end of the day, we could not produce the number we were hoping to produce. Hmm. So we from the party have done some groundwork. We'll only improve on it as we go into the local government and um, the state elections. Let's talk about what's happening on the floor of the National Assembly um, um, recently. And now some persons were nominated uh, by the National Working Committee of your party. Um, and um, they were given, you know, nominated apparently uh, for some leadership positions on the floor of the National Assembly. Um, there are concerns about the fact that there's lack of female representation in all of these positions. Again, what are your thoughts on this? So, well, uh, um, that, that was expected. In the Senate, I'm sure you know we have only one woman from APC in the Senate. So having just one woman, it's going to be difficult uh, um, to get her into um, the apex uh, position in the House, um, bearing in, uh, in mind the fact that you can get all of the men to um, support her. And then the most important part was the fact that she's a first-timer and Senate have their rules that as a first-timer, you cannot run for certain um, presiding um, um, officers' position in the Senate and, of course, in the lower house. So we had situations where uh, we had women coming in as first-timers. Uh, um, of course, the um, Ms. Adebule, or Her, Her Excellency Adebule, who is representing Lagos, one of the senatorial districts in Lagos State, she's the only woman on our party um, ticket that is in the Senate. Uh, the other two women, one is from PDP and the other is from LP. And so um, she and all of them are all first timers. And so they're not going to be able to contest following the House rules. However, we're hoping to build on this to say by the time they're coming back for a second term and more women are voted into the Senate and into the House of Reps, then we stand a better chance to bring up women that to run for the presiding officer's position in the Senate and the Reps. Let's, let's move away from politics and bring it down to the people where, of course, after May 29, your um, uh, president-elect, of course, will now have to deal with us. Um, looking at the concerns about gender you know, gap in education, in employment opportunities in Nigeria, uh, what policies would be the APC putting in place to address some of these issues as we speak? Um, our, the level of unemployment, uh, youth unemployment in Nigeria has more than doubled. Um, so the APC does have its work cut out for it. So what do you uh, pr propose will be the policies that will be put in place? First, we are grateful to God and to Nigerians that the best man for the job is going to be sworn in as the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, to be precise, the 16th president, that's Asiwaju Bola Ahmed Tinibu. Asiwaju Bola Ahmed Tinibu is a man with experience, a man who has the heart to make those changes because you need a heart of a lion to actually bring the right change in this country. And is a man that has that heart, that audacity to bring about the change that Nigerians look forward to a very positive, prosperous nation where everyone can go about their own lives and pursue their dreams to the Senate. And that's what Aswajibola Metini is bringing to the table. If you looked at his action plan, working with his deputy, his vice, um, um, Senator Kashim Shetima, who has a very great track record too in Bruno, you will see that they have clearly stated how they want to get 
people um, into jobs using all the sectors. Even I can give you an example. The health sector will be pulling in a lot of people into um, um, jobs. Remember that as we speak right now, the NHS in America, sorry, in the UK, um, of course, is the fifth highest employer of labor in the entire world. So health sector can equally bring in um, a, a lot of employment for Nigerians across board. Even people who are not health workers have a role to play in the entire health system. Of course, several other um, uh, employment strategies, which he clearly stated out in his um, action plan for the young people, he has stated from the level of their education, supporting them through student loans, providing grants for them, and of course, startup hubs all across the nation, innovative hubs, just the way it is in China mm. and other developed countries that have helped young people express themselves and be able to make huge monies for themselves just through technology and innovation. Asuajibola well, Metinibu wants to go full flesh into this. Of course, he stated very clearly in his manifesto, I'll call it an action plan, as he stated, that in all of his program, we will have the gender sensitive aspect of it, where women and the vulnerable will be carefully taken care of. So women can always be sure of that. I'll give you an example. When he was the governor of Lagos State, of course, you know very well that he was the first to appoint a female as the head of the judiciary in Lagos. Beyond this, in the civil service, he employed over 50% as women into civil service employment. And then today, the resultant effect is the fact that most of the permanent secretaries in Lagos are females. And so you can see that transition. You can see that foundation where he's coming from. He worked on the economy of Lagos. He worked on security. He did a lot of work at the grassroots. In Bruno, we had a Senator Kashim Shetima that did so much work coming from an insurgence and trying to rebuild Bruno State. Having these two men on the saddle of affairs in Nigeria, we can only but hope for the very, very best and we're positive that Nigerians will indeed be most grateful for this decision. And in the next four years, they will be the one appealing to them to run for a second term. Uh, interesting how you've sort of lined up some of the things that you say that um, the president-elect wants to do. But I just want to go through a few things that were in his manifesto and some that, you know, um, I think I want to talk about. Um, he talked about the fact that he's going to export more, import less. He's going to strengthen both the Naira and our way of life. He's talked about... Um, manufacturing, creating and inventing more goods and services that we require. And Nigeria will be known as a nation of creators and not just con consumers. So I want to start, my first question is obviously, um, how does he intend to do this? Because um, we know that we have refineries that are not working, they're being serviced. We have manufacturing companies and plants. Take, for example, the Ajakuta Steel Company is moribund. As we speak, our debt profile has skyrocketed. So I'm curious, where is it going to get the money and how? I mean, because the APC has been in power for the past eight years, um, and they were unable to figure out how to get these things up and running. What does Asiwa do have outside of the APC and all of that the Bahari administration has not been able to accomplish? Again, like I always say, leadership is about the leader first, the audacity to do, the audacity to change, thinking and doing like he would always tell you. Thinkers and doers are what will get the job done, right? Asojibola Metinibu is one who has, um, in time past, had nest both international and local um, resources as well as expertise and partnerships to be able to break economic barriers. As we speak today, Lagos State is the fifth largest economy in Africa, even larger than the economy of Nigeria, but as a whole, you can clearly see that it was from a plan, a clear plan by one who had a vision and was able to go all out to implement this vision in Lagos State. As Swajibola Metinibu has been very clear with the fact that Nigeria has been very dependent on imported goods from all over the world. In fact, at some point, Nigeria has basically um, been said, I've seen um, articles where we are called the dumping ground. So when you have anything you have to sell or you want to push into Africa, the largest market, of course, in Africa is Nigeria. So you just go dump it there, including drugs, vaccines, um, food commodities, name it. He wants to build more on industrialization. 
putting these raw materials, the raw materials we have in our country, processing them to their final products where we can export them and make a lot of GDP from that. And this will be plunged back into several other aspects like healthcare, education, name it, to help boost our economy and bring that human capital to its height. For me, I'm very, very sure that if he can pick a Lagos from 50 million Naira revenue in a month, ensure that he had part Partnerships to bring in all the industrialization in Lagos, where they get huge amounts from taxes, and of course, even going as far as reclaiming an Atlantic Ocean just to create another city called the Atlantic City. And Asiwa Jobola and Metinibu would do same, same for, uh, for Nigeria as a country and make us that economic envy of Africa and indeed the world. Let's come back to your constituency, which is women. Um, apparently, the Sustainable Development Goals um, has called for gender equality and, you know, women's empowerment generally. Um, how do you see the APC government aligning with this agenda and dealing with issues uh, that affect women in different parts of Nigeria, especially when we talk about traditional and religious um, issues that have somewhat kept women, uh, you know, in a very tight spot and not allowing them to flourish? I think the very first thing which um, Asiwa Jibola Ahmed Tinibu has promised to do working together with the 10th Assembly is to ensure that we have the right legislation on the table to back up all of the reforms and policies that um, the gender, uh, the female gender would be benefiting from. I think uh, starting on that note would be uh, one of the strongest standpoints for this administration. Um, indeed, women have been shortchanged. Indeed, um, politics, the culture at different parts of the country, of course, religious barriers, financial barriers, stereotyping, a whole lot is going on to put women at the back burner. And it's so easy to use one woman to judge millions of other women and shut the door against other women just because a woman makes a mistake. But every other day, men make mistakes mistakes and they go scot-free from it, right? And other men are not judged by the mistake of one man. Just that man is judged by his own mistake. All of these things are things that we need to critically address um, as an administration, as a party, APC, and as a country, Nigeria. The men need to understand that we are partners in development. We are not competitors. We're not competing for space. We are partners. Women bring a lot to the table and they must encourage and work with us to achieve more. As well, Jubola Ahmed Tinibu has that at the back of his mind. His wife, Senator Luremi Tinibu, who herself has been a gender advocate, even from the days uh, uh, as being a wife of a governor in Lagos, and um, to a senator, uh, uh, a three-time senator in the Senate. She's passed several bills on gender, and these will come into play in her role as the first lady of this country. We are hopeful that with this power-packed team on board come 29th of May, Nigerians, and indeed Nigerian women, will smile again. Uh, how do you plan to work with other women and women leaders in, in different organizations and also across party lines to advocate for gender equality um, uh, in government and society at large? So the gender issue is bec be beyond any party. And of course, we have um, uniting or common fronts like the UN women. We have other um, um, NGOs, CSOs, CBOs that are all interested in this gender mainstreaming. And so it, we are going to harness all of these people, put them together and see how best we can work from the party angles across party lines to empower women and mainstream women. But most importantly, like I said, it, it should not be left at the discretion of who the leader is. We need laws to back this up. So whether the person who comes in after Siwa Jubola and Metinibu uh, like women or not, whether he feels uh, religiously constrained to empower women or not, whether he feels culturally constrained to empower women or not, the law says so, and you need to be able to abide by the law as a citizen of Nigeria. First among others, you need to abide by the law. So we really, really need that legislation, and all women across party lines, across um, across um, all the NGOs um, and 
indeed CBOs and the rest of them, uh, civil society organizations, need to come out with one voice to demand for laws that protect our rights as women and empower us, giving us that gender mainstreaming that we so seek. Um, again, what's your advice um, for young women who aspire into positions of leadership, uh, especially government and politics? Um, I mean, because this is the main focus of this conversation today. As much as we're talking about the president-elect here, we're also talking about strategies that can help women come break the glass ceiling and get to positions where men already have been uh, over time. So how do you intend to do that? Because, of course, I'm guessing that there are lots of young women who look up to you. So we do a lot of mentorship at the level of the party. We have the young women um, that are being mentored through different forums, different engagements um, strategically. And then, of course, even from other wings, young women are being mentored. But like I always tell young women, the time is now and it's time for us to rise up with one voice and go for what we seek. Uh, my biggest and strongest advice to young women is stay focused and stay consistent. You come in today, you jump out tomorrow, you're here next tomorrow, you're there next tomorrow, would not earn you what you want. Look at what you want, ex ensure that you have a goal which should be very impactful on the entire population. Ensure that you're giving value. Ensure that you bring so much to the table. No one will resist value. No one will resist a, a, a right change, a positive change, right? So ensure that you have the capacity and you're bringing value to the table. Decide what it is you want to achieve for yourself, for your community, and indeed for Nigeria as a nation. Focus on it. Stay consistent. Work hard at it. Don't get stereotyped. Don't get pushed to the back burner because this one says so, this one says this. They're going to come at you calling you all sorts of names. They're going to say, oh, how wayward you are, how this, how that. They're going to be judgmental. They're going to use all sorts of things to keep you at the back burner. They'll bring the religious card. They will play the cultural card. They'll play the you are a woman card, stereotyping you. They will even make you see yourself as being less qualified to be anything thing that you want to be. Remember that other women will even come at you as a woman rather than coming to meet you and sorting out whatever it is they feel they have with you. They will come attacking you. They'll talk you down. They'll try to put you at the back burner. But as a young woman, stay focused. Determine what you want. Hook onto God and then work hard at it. Nothing beats diligence, hard work and focus with consistency. Remember, even the Holy Book says that show me a man who is diligent in his ways. He will not stand before mean men. He will stand before kings. So this is my advice for young people. Work hard, stay focused, build your capacity, and the sky is your limit. Nobody has the right to question your dreams. Nobody has the right to place a limit on you. Nobody has the right to put a cap on you. You and you alone can only place that limit on yourself. That's I do is the National Woman Leader for the All Progressive Congress, APC. Uh, thank you so much for speaking with us. We appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. All right. Up next, the People's Democratic Party the Governors Forum has listed governors yes and weekend and other governors as those they will be honoring uh, as outgoing governors. Stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs>